Easter for everyone watching here. This is Skinny Ebert, um, otherwise known as Mark or Skinny Me, whatever you want to call it. I'm here to present Magnus Carlsen, who is one of my favorite animators of all time, who worked on Paranoid Android, the music video for Radiohead, Free Friends of Jerry, Robin, Lace, and The Mob. How do you do that, Magnus? Hi, I'm fine. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Nice to meet you too. Um, we definitely have an interesting set of questions for everyone to ask you for. And uh, we'll start with the uh, elephant in the room, which is uh, Radio Head Panel and Android and the inspiration for that work. How did you get involved with that particular music video? Well, I think it was uh, almost 25 years ago. Um, their uh, producer uh, phoned me up and um, and she asked me if I would like to do a, a music video for the band uh, Radiohead. And uh, at the time, I, I, I was not so very familiar with the band, uh, but uh, they sent me the music and uh, I, I thought it was like a, a masterpiece, uh, the song, so of course I said yes. Well, you've definitely very, done a very good job at that, I mean, definitely one of the most uh, outre music videos that I'm aware of there. Um, I know there was some controversy regarding you know, having a man's head on someone's stomach and I said, the man chopping the limbs after trying to cut the light. I mean, you know, he's carrying on my bare breasted woman. I thought that was pretty amusing there. Did you have any issues with the censorship, at least for UK or US markets? Um, yes, I think when... Uh, uh, when it was uh, on uh, MTV and uh, it has gone for a, for a week or so, they s s start to censure uh, the video. But uh, uh, there were so many people uh, getting in touch with uh, uh, MTV. So uh, after a week or, or two again, they, they uh, canceled the censorship and, and, um, and uh, showed it, show the video how it uh, was uh, supposed to be. Interesting, interesting. Um, see, take it from that perspective, because I know, you know they were quite lenient on some, but they weren't so lenient on others. Because um, when I first literally saw it, um, they had to blow out that scene with the man's head and the stomach and also the aggressive and kind of like the limbs, but um, they showed it uncut. Mm -hmm. but, um, I thought that way. I thought that I thought they censored more uh, the nipples of the mermaids and stuff like that. But I don't know. Uh, yeah, they did. Maybe that was just the US market. Mm -hmm. um, I was lucky to see it without any of the cutting and trimming. Mm -hmm. It was my first introduction to sort of adult animation mm -hmm. because at that time, what I thought was adult animation was uh, Fritz the Cat at South Park. Mm -hmm. um, which will lead on to another question mm -hmm. in regards to uh, Three Friends and Jerry, one of your most popular works. Mm -hmm. um, trying to get but did, but did you, uh, just to, 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 to end up with uh, the paranormal and red. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, did you see the, in the Rolling Stone magazine uh, they uh, listed the uh, hundred best music videos ever made? Did you see that? Uh, yes, I saw that very same article. I was very happy uh, to see that particular music video get mentioned because so, uh, so, so that was pretty cool. Work of art. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, so yes, I'm, I'm interested to see that. I know they mentioned it on a Watch Mojo countdown as well, which was pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you can't say that for many other works, but you definitely can say it for this one. Um, I know, and the inspiration for mainly came out of Robin, um, which was another popular work of yours, which you said, um, if, if I'm correct, Tom York saw on Channel 4, he got the inspiration to use it because it had that kind of cultural element, mm. if I'm correct. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're correct. He saw it on, on Channel 4, or actually, I think the, the band was... Uh, uh, saw it uh, on uh, on the pub before it it uh, was even shown uh, on uh, channel four 
because, uh, uh, well, I don't remember, but uh, they, they saw it somewhere uh, in the mid 90s, uh, some, some, sometimes. I, I started to do a, a, like a short film with Robin with uh, five or six or seven uh, episodes. And that uh, short film was uh, uh, all over uh, Europe in uh, film festivals and uh, in, uh, they showed uh, those films uh, everywhere at the time. And uh, after that, we, we, we made uh, that uh, Robin series of uh, 26 episodes. Okay, then we had to start from somewhere. Yeah. I know on your end, um, it has that kind of culture element. Uh, was it based upon your childhood or your adolescence, teenage years? Uh, Robin. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, I think it was more uh, based on uh, the type of life I was uh, living myself at, at the time. Okay, then. Um, and then uh, in regards to the music element behind it all, because you know, it has a connection with Channel 4 and MTV, which is countercultural. Um, what, how do you explain about um, your choice of music for both Robin and other works like Free Friends and The Mob? Because I know you like a lot of alternative and ska and reggae stuff as well. Mm. But in Robin, it was more uh, like uh, the 90s uh, hip hop. And uh, I was doing the music, uh, I was sampling uh, and, and doing the music myself for, for Robin, but then we did the series, we were, it was a lot, a lot of uh, uh, jazz loops and from uh, Blue News and, uh, you know, and uh, we, we, uh, uh, we couldn't get the right for every loop uh, I have uh, sampled, so we record we we recorded it with uh, uh, jazz mus musicians in uh, Toronto, uh, and sampled it all. The, uh, they were playing more or less the same loops, and we were sampling it again and uh, rebuilding uh, the music that I uh, that I did. So it was an interesting. Uh, uh, journey with uh, doing the music for uh, Robin. Oh, okay. I, uh, I know like you said from a conversation that we had before this started, mm -hmm. they had worked from Nelvana mm -hmm. and their major animation company in Canada mm -hmm. worked on Ned's Fairy Fairy Odd Parents and uh, Bob and Margaret. Yeah. So they hear their involvement in it uh, and also getting the Toronto jazz musicians, I think was pretty clever. It right? definitely is a product of 1990s culture that unfortunately cannot be replicated. Mm. Speaking of someone who grew up on a lot of 1990s and early 2000s content, at least growing up mm. as a child and an adolescent. So yeah, it holds a special place in my heart, as does uh, your other work, The Three Friends and Jerry, um, which is my favorite work out of uh, your collection. <laughs> I don't know, I shouldn't pick favorites, but that's just at least from my opinion. Um, the inspiration for that, um, was it based on your childhood, uh, like um, some of the others or no? Yeah, The Three Friends and Jerry was based on my, my uh, childhood. Uh, we live in a small uh, uh, town or a small village uh, in Sweden. And uh, between I was like uh, six to 12 or something like that. So uh, it, it's that uh, period in the 70s in, in, uh, in Sweden. Well, very well, I can tell you that. Um, I was expecting you know, Swedish kids to be you know, cool in a sort of way that was, uh, you probably said of American ones as well, but maybe that's just me. Um, I know in a way influence wise, was influenced by Stephen King's stand up no, stand by me or the Snoopy Charlie Brown stuff to some extent. Um, not, uh, I never thought about it like that, but but uh, of course, I th uh, Stand by Me was a good uh, film when when it uh, came in the beginning of the eighties. But uh, uh, well, 
maybe all of it or all of it and um, nothing you know it's it's hard to to actually you are in you have to take in so much influences all the time from um, where you are so i can't really say but uh, the biggest in influence is was uh, from uh, my actual life there uh, in, in when i grew up we were just curious about that, that there. but yeah, um, it's still pretty interesting. Yeah. A little bit wilder than I expected it to be. Now commissioning the program itself, I'm sure it's a bit of a challenge mm. um, because of some of the content. Um, I believe, is it true about the short film? Like we said before the conversation, how, how drinking or smoking and they thought, oh, it was a bit too wild. So tone it down a little bit, or at least it was too similar to South Park. I don't know. Is it urban legend? Uh, we were, I was doing a short film uh, or a pilot for uh, with the Free Fans and Jerry, and it was uh, much edgier when uh, the series uh, turned out. Uh, and uh, they were drinking and smoking and uh, using a bad. Uh, language and uh, stuff like that because I, I wanted to do a, uh, uh, a series for uh, adults for the same uh, audience as uh, I don't know South Park or uh, Family Guy maybe or something like that but um, uh, and when we present the series we also present it to uh, Comedy Central at the time uh, and they were uh, looking at it and then they come back to us and they said we like it and uh, uh, how far have you come in the process of uh, developing this uh, series because we have something similar and that was uh, South Park so we were uh, in the same area in, in, uh, in those days but then we, uh, uh, there were other companies, I think in the US, I think it was uh, Fox Family at the time, uh, we really liked oh, it. Yeah. And um, uh, so we uh, turned it down to, to fit an, an audience for like um, uh, 10, eight, uh, 9, 10, 11, something, something like that. Uh, like the uh, seven to eleven crowd, mm. <coughs> if I'm assuming from like your age classification system, BTL seven, eleven, and fifteen. It's sort of like at the seven range, but yeah, um, I'm always curious about that there because I know um, some uh, entities, even if they said it was turned down, that have said, "Oh, this is a bit too out there." in your window and bad behavior they didn't like that the children were looking down at the girls underwear with the magnifying glass or um a few of the things in there i won't go into too much detail and uh, is it true that in norway they objected to an episode that involves a ouija board where they do like a seance and summon the dead mm. Uh, yes, it is. Um, um, it was a big argument, uh, and I think uh, it ended up that they was uh, not showing that episode in uh, Norway, and they wrote uh, a lot about it in the Norwegian papers at the time, which surprised me. But they were very Christian in, in Norway in those days, and maybe they still are. So it was uh, from that uh, perspective, they, uh, they um, thought it was uh, satanistic or <laughs> something like that. <laughs> That's, uh, I mean, I've heard of it taken in that context because most of the prisoners I heard were mostly from you know, British and American parents, more so American parents, so a bit more prudish and conservative, but hmm. who am I to say really? Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure in France, where it might be under it's a copain, le troisième, um, le trois copain de Jerry, et Jerry, which, um, if I'm like, oh, it is not a problem. No. We have such a thing that we call it titeur, 
D I T E U F. I don't know if that's a thing in uh, Sayadika. But yeah. Um, in speaking of the animation industry in Sweden, what is it like? I know Denmark gets a bit more love, and as obviously Britain, Canada, the US, and Japan, they're on the way. What was it like for the uh, Swedish mark, or even Nordic in general? You mean uh, right now, or? Back then, or, or even currently? Back then it was uh, almost as it is now again. Uh, there were like very small companies and uh, doing uh, children uh, for uh, uh, children shows for the Swedish television and they got uh, money from the Swedish Film Institute and, uh, and the Swedish uh, television. And uh, uh, when we came, we were uh, aiming for uh, an international market at the, uh, from the beginning. And we, uh, uh, the first series was uh, Robin, and then and then it was uh, the Free Friends and Jerry, and it it was a really for the first time uh, industrial uh, uh, series. It was a lot of people working with uh, in uh, in uh, Free Friends and Jerry, and it was made in South Korea. And we had the people all, all over the the place working with that one, and. Uh, so that was something uh, totally new for for the Swedish market at, at, at the time, but nowadays uh, I think it's uh, back to how it was: S small c companies doing uh, small series for uh, for uh, small children. Again, that's kind of what I thought because I've never really grow, growing up, never really seen a lot of Svenska. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. television or even in the cinema really most of the Nordic animation I grew up on was Danish mm -hmm. or Dansk uh, with Terkel and Nip and Hjarp Jarkar and Fisk up on the fish Tuck on Trouble which was made by someone who I follow on Instagram called Steph Hjardmark I don't know if you know him personally mm -hmm. no uh, it, 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 it seems uh, familiar but uh... Can play some right now. Yeah, um, but you know, seeing the Danish cartoons, I thought mm, that's well, particularly Terkel. That was quite similar to Three Friends in a way. I thought, oh my, I was taken aback by it. And, you know, how similar it was, but um, I think like Dan Denmark, we said on the earlier conversation, is a bit more wild than Sweden is. Yeah. No, nowadays it's uh, Denmark. It's uh, uh, they have much more. more uh, uh, they are not so um, afraid, and they are not so political correct. And uh, uh, when they are doing uh, uh, comedy shows, and uh, uh, in, in Sweden, they uh, we are so afraid that. Uh, someone can be offended and um, so it's, it's very hard to do uh, comedy in Sweden uh, actually nowadays it was much easier in the 90s and in the uh, early 2000 yeah I could agree with that I don't think they can make uh, Robin or Three Friends uh, by today's standards oh. Well, you know, that remains to be seen because they have done a film that was kind of similar uh, to three friends called Good Boys, which is a Canadian-American movie by, produced by Seth Rogen. And that had, you know, three kids getting up to no good. Mm. Um, much of the marketing for that film was it's rated R, which means 17 and up. Otherwise, you go with, with the parents, kind of like the, the 15 certificate in Sweden. Mm -hmm. And that was marketing and behind it. See all these kids swearing to love sex. Eh. Well, that was pretty funny there. But it's probably not as mm. wild as some of the stuff you get over in Guam in Finland. Mm -hmm. I sh I'm just saying that for the audience because I've got a few friends who live in Helsinki and Espoo. So yeah. we always talk about their 
spots and stuff on the bear. Yeah. Well, I, uh, they are doing yeah. they are doing a new series with beavers and batted, I think, or is it a is, is it a feature? No, I think it's it's a series. Have you heard about well, that? We're going to try to bring it back. Uh, yes, uh, uh, I, 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 I'm very curious it's, to see if like if what they can um, make uh, jokes about. Uh, if there could be as uh, as they were in, uh, in in the 90s, if they could make the same kind of jokes, I don't know. I don't think it'll probably work um, in, in some kind of perspective. I think just keep it as a relic, lock the box, and move on there. But I guess <coughs> Mike Judge needs to pay for his mortgage. And for his children's university tuition, so I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But uh, as far as like comparisons from Free Friends to other works like South Park or Ed and Neddy, I don't know if you know that one. Does it annoy you when they make comparisons between Free Friends and South Park? Because growing up, I couldn't watch Three Friends after a certain point because they thought it was too similar to South Park. They thought the children were doing things that they shouldn't. My parents, they were pretty relaxed. I could watch Simpsons, but other things, eh. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. What's your take on that? People saying, oh, it's too similar to South Park with Ed and Eddie. Yeah, uh, probably in Malaysia. <laughs> uh, well, well if, if they think so, it's, uh, what, what can I say? I mean, it's... Uh, um, I was doing uh, the Free Friends and Jerry in the same time. At the same time when uh, South Park did South Park, so it's, it's um, but South Park was for uh, for an older audience. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, that... if, if people would compare it, then, then... go ahead. Uh, some of my friends make films as well. They make films that. And get compared to other movies that came out before, mm -hmm. and uh, they always roll their eyes and like, oh, oh, please don't bring that up. <laughs> so I think that's pretty funny. And uh, um, as far as your start in getting the animation, um, did you get started with in the two D or stop motion sphere? Because I know you've done a little film for the Swedish market that was a stop motion about pigs mm -hmm. um, growing up. Uh, no, I, st I was starting in, in the good old times when we were in, uh, in the 80s, actually, where, where we uh, were working with uh, cell and, and uh, film cameras and uh, cutting boards and uh, uh, same, uh, same as uh, in the Disney early days. So, uh, and from that, uh, uh, I mean, I like. I have mostly worked with two D animation because I I like the graphical style and uh, and so on. But, um, uh, it was nice to do a uh, uh, puppet uh, feature film for children called uh, Desmond, and uh, that was uh, so much. Uh, Handcraft and uh, uh, it was a, a fantastic thing to do. We we, we worked with that with four four teams for uh, one year, and it was uh, uh, yeah it, it it was a, a really nice experience. I had uh, done uh, earlier before that. I had done uh, some uh, 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 clay animation for uh, for Swedish. Uh, youth programs for TV and one, one, one series is called Alice in Plasmaland and it was uh, really edgy and really cool and it was uh, like in uh, uh, early 90s I did that so okay yeah. so check, nice. check, check that one up if you if you can find Alice in Plasmaland it's a series Alice in Plasmaland I'll definitely uh, check that out because it's um... I love the old school animation art forms. They don't make them like they used to. Um, you know, one could argue you have to go back to like 
the mid or late nineties is when that era sort of stopped. I know they sort of make the cell and the stop motion even to this day, but um, you know, there's a lot of digital and CG components which kind of takes away from some of the brilliance now. Everything has to be on CG or flash mm. or digital because it's cheaper or faster. But mm. um, there's a sort of ornateness with stop motion because I'm a fan of Aardman. Mm. My Me too. My father's friend worked at Cosgrove Hall, and worked on um, a few shows, including Noddy, mm-hmm. uh, which is a popular uh, Welsh British cast. So, yeah, um, very interesting to see that it cannot easily be replicated. And I think that's the ultimate charm of it all. Getting on to the other questions we have in mind. Because you probably need to go to your dinner or hmm. need to take care of your children. Well, what <laughs> time is it? Uh, okay, we can let's try to, to end in, in 10 minutes, right? Oh, yes, um, almost be done here yeah, just for everyone. Um, for Jolly Patron, are you working on any new projects at the moment? Yes, I'm working on uh, three or four. Uh, projects at the same time developing uh, mainly on myself uh, writing and uh, dr- make uh, drawing and sketches and uh, so uh, that's what I'm doing at, at the moment oh, in, in the animation area then I'm more into uh, art projects and uh, uh, painting paintings and uh, uh, writing uh, uh, novels and stuff like that. So, but that's uh, something uh, completely different. Okay, then. Uh, we wish the best luck to you in your projects. I know the pandemic has thrown a lot of things off. You probably might have even had to work at a job that isn't related to your skill set just to survive. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that was for you. Um, no, I I I, I survive, <laughs> but uh, uh, there is there hasn't been much action on the animation side uh, in uh, for the last uh, year or so. But uh, well, hopefully it kicks back up and uh, yeah. <laughs> get the wheels rolling, get the Volvo S60 up in uh, ignition, electric mode. Yeah. Mine, pardon the, the Volvo joke. I'm a big fan of that brand. That's actually one of the, my favorite things about Sweden, even though I've never been, but I mm. hope to someday soon. Mm. I used to work in... Like the that, was, that was my one of my first work uh, in uh, in Volvo, in the car factory in Gothenburg in uh, 1982, I think it was. Oh, well, I honestly didn't even know. Now you're a better <laughs> friend in my heart. Do you, do you drive one yourself? No, no. Or Bob? No. I, 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 drive, uh, I drive a Jeep. Hey, whatever works there, especially in Swedish snow, mm. it can get uh, quite heavy yeah. at times, or maybe a little less so because of climate change. Now with um, the, the Swedish film and TV industry, um, What's your favorite stuff at the moment? I know there must be enough to like the sort of Nordic noir stuff like the Millennium series and Modus. I don't know what your take is on that. You're more focused on like the comedy stuff. Mm. I'm uh, I'm uh, watching some old uh, Danish stuff uh, at the moment, and it's a ser- series uh, called uh, Clown. And it's uh, historically K L O V N. Yeah, it's so good. It's a uh, it's really really a masterpiece. So um, they done a film a few years ago. They done um, I think I, my I think I think three uh, feature films and the six uh, TV series. So it's it was a big thing in uh, in Denmark. It's really really good. I'll definitely have to check that out there because. Um, it probably is quite similar to sort of like Terkeri Neve or Anders Matheson's type of work. Mm. So yeah, it might be good there. I always thought it was pronounced as Cloven. Yeah. So I can't pronounce um, it. That's um, clear. Yeah, um, maybe. It's Cloven. <laughs> I think, no, no, no maybe Cloven. I don't know. I can't speak Danish. It's, um, it's, uh... 
you, you must you speak English or uh, still Swedish when you go to the other Nordic countries? Uh, I, I, I can't understand uh, Danish if they speak s slowly, but it's, it's hard if they uh, really speak uh, in a fast way, but um, uh, same with, with Norwegian. You, you understand it. We understand each other if, if, we, if, we, if we try. I was just curious about that because. Um, but Finnish is uh, something. Com yeah. Finnish is something completely uh, different. No one, nobody understands Finnish. Yeah. That, don't even try to just say, sauna, tarvantol, poalan, koirat horosuoja, and just get on. All right. Koirat, el kor, film. I know. I I know only the bad words, but uh, in Finnish. We can't say for board films, but um, <laughs> maybe at another time. And, uh, what would you say is your, so your favorite animated film or TV in recent years? For me, I'm a, a big fan of uh, Leica stuff. I love Coraline and Paranorman. I also like Sausage Party and um, some of the later Disney, sorry, later Pixar stuff like Soul and Toy Story 4 and Incredibles 2. What about for you? I'm not so much, I'm not so interested in animation actually. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. my life I just uh, turn out to, to, to be in that uh, area. I, I, I'm not uh, an uh, animation fan in that uh, way. So <laughs> to ask your, your question, it's, it's probably probably uh, family guy or something like that, but that's just for the humor. And you're not alone though. I like Family Guy too. It's uh, very wild and outrageous, uh, but in a way that's a bit more outrageous than Robin. Uh, but uh, and but, then also, but, but that, that's more for, for the comedy. Of it. Oh yeah, <laughs> of course. My favorite shows, I must just watch travel shows these days. Mm -hmm. and seeing people go to this place, that place in the world, that keeps me busy. And a sound tracker, which is done by a Finnish fellow named Sami Yafa. Mm -hmm. You probably would like a lot of the music he does. It's very sort of metal, rock oriented. Uh, Put him on a remake of The Mob uh, in, if right. they ever make The Mob in the future. <laughs> you have to, you can send me some, uh, uh, some uh, examples so I can check oh, it yes. out. Oh, definitely. I also send some of my music as well because yeah. I also make uh, music on the side under the name. And XQ and Head Smoke. Mm -hmm. But um, that's when we'll talk about that after hours. And the last question for everyone out there is how can they participate with Jolly Patron? If you're looking for animators or crew members? Uh, the best thing is to, to uh, um, send something you know, that you, they have done, uh, small. Uh, uh, pilot or uh, a, a small film or something they have put up on, uh, on put on uh, YouTube or something that uh, to see where they are and what they do and uh, that's the easiest way. Okay then, it never works. Well, I'm sorry to keep you busy and sorry for any technical difficulties that we might have. Um, there was a few issues of Skype and Zoom, but hopefully for the audience out there we got what we could. Yeah. And if any questions, just let us on the comments. All right. Uh, it's been nice to have you, Mr. Magnus Carlson. Um, so then, uh, take care and uh, Larkon. Huh? I don't know Spanish <laughs> words, but Larkon. Yeah, Larkon, that's, that's, uh, that's okay. That's, that's good. All right, thanks. Thank you. And uh, talk to you again. Bye-bye.